Hello, I am William Chernikoff, and I lead the Toyota Mobility Foundation's Global Research and Innovation Program. I engage on future mobility across the globe, and I will share my human-centered view on mo future mobility, its intersection with the built environment, how we may get there, the fundamental role of data in achieving this future, and how some of the foundation's research and technology work is enabling cities, communities, and individuals to meet this future promise. Where do we start? How do we get from where we are today to where we want to be tomorrow? A connected built environment is the ideal outcome. Why? This reimagining can improve safety, decrease environmental and climate impacts, increase and improve mobility, especially for those experiencing limited mobility, and help understand the distribution of benefits or negative consequences and burdens. This reimagination is built on data. First, focusing on technology and singular solutions and an over-reliance on data without understanding the full context neither reflects the heterogeneous population we serve, nor considers the complete system and interconnection between people, place, and purpose. We need to understand how data fits in to answer fundamental questions on distribution and alignment with policy objectives, and how government and the private sector can use and share it. This is not a story of more or clean data. Rather, the evolution is now focusing on the data's completeness and its interpretation to minimize bias and error. It is a story of value. Therefore, to avoid risks, the collection should consider what makes the data useful. For example, do we have the right granularity? Are we measuring everything or just what we know? Do we have the right tools and methods to analyze, visualize, and use the data? Resilient mobility is built on robustness and flexibility, integration of, but independence of the different modes. The improvement in mobility management cross modes and the ability of the people who operate and design mobility systems to use increasingly better AI and machine learning depends on the data and ability to communicate it. So how do we make the data work? As I just discussed, TMF, some stakeholders, and our collaborators at the Alan Turing Institute recognize that even as we improve data collection, we still have a problem with how it flows and is presented to policymakers and system operators. So we needed and worked to develop better data analysis, interpretation, and visualization. Here, I show an example of layering data sources to understand better the distribution, benefits, and burdens I mentioned earlier. We combine three different data sources, some with multiple layers themselves, to evaluate household access to EV charging infrastructure across many metrics, some shown here. We are starting to see the future today. Here is another example of how our collaborators at the Turing developed a system to answer a range of regulatory policy and design questions. The result is a platform that uses different data sources and provides the user an easy ability to build and to manipulate dashboards. This example shows how, within a short period of time, we answered the city of Los Angeles's question on scooter allocation with a focus on priority areas, something important to them for regulatory compliance. Now we are starting to see how the same data is providing more insight. Pedestrian vision is not new. The challenge posed by our collaborators, the city of LA, was how to do it better 
and more critically, do it using existing and future equipment used for vehicular traffic management. This is significant for two reasons. First, it reflected the desire to put pedestrians, including cyclists and micromobility, on the same level and the same system as vehicles. Data layering. Second, it is an example of what I will cover later, design for volvability. No special hardware was needed. And in fact, LA used existing analog and digital traffic cameras and then added a newer generation. As a result, the data collection, analysis, and vis visualization system works accurately and reliably across many technology generations, reflecting how cities exist and operate. Accurate counting in crowded spaces and those with obscured vision needs trajectory generation. We can now extend this data and machine learning into more advanced analysis to include near miss identification. In other words, we use the same data to generate new insights into design and operation. Effective mobility management systems reflect and consider the heterogeneity and complexity of the people and providers that use and operate in the system. All modes provide value to their users, from public to shared to personal and private mobility. Many users will shift modes based on the utility it provides at the time of need. This utility is based on many things, including time, weather, convenience, safety, and cost, and other. Understanding these choices is based on constantly updated data. Cities can use it to inform and nudge users to rebalance and optimize movement. This work by the Turing is finding its way into improved algorithms. So now we can better consider the complex and computationally intensive knock-on effects that allow us to move from optimizing a single intersection or road to metropolitan-wide optimization in real time. When implemented, we can regularly rebalance each mode and across modes. Let us shift from operation to design. While no model is perfect, better, more robust data is enabling city managers and planners to make better informed decisions and plan for the future. An example is our work with the George Washington University Systems Engineering Department. The city wanted to redo a major street and prioritize bus transit. Through empirical data and novel improvements to Sumo simulation software, the results showed that while improving the performance for the bus is important, Everyone is better off with more and faster overall mobility when the infrastructure is shared between buses and cars in a managed way. Through our collaboration with MIT's PREX lab, we developed a suite of parametric modeling tools that link across three scales and soon to be a fourth smaller scale as well. This tool helps design communities where most people live globally, which is outside of the urban core. The design seeks to maximize ecosystem services and provide for a highly mobile, sustainable community. It is a shift in how we think about land, infrastructure, and mobility. We also took this design approach one step further to focus on universal, barrier-free, and desirable access and connection of the built environment to the transportation options. Because as we know, if a person cannot complete the pedestrian part of the journey, the best public transit system, shared mobility, or personal vehicle will not help. A 
And this system will operate on the constant flow of data that connects the vehicles to the built environment and people. Sustained resilient data usage requires evolvability. There are many unanswered questions with currently unknowable answers. Independent of the preferences and priorities of communities, it is increasingly important to understand the pathways, options, and consequences of the decisions we make today and consider how we design to evolve for a flexible, adaptable, and resilient future. This design approach changes in how we design for the future with embedded optionality and flexibility. Designing for the near term does not require specific time or design for the end state. Now, a final thought. The best practices today and the highlighted future are built on data systems that can evolve. The future will not happen by accident or without a clear path to get there. Changes take time. We need to understand how to get to the future. At the core of the transition is data dependent on the safe and secure, reliable and accurate systems that provide it. All of this depends on the compatibility of the components and systems as they change. This is why we worked with GW system engineering department to create a decision tool that is a fundamentally different way to consider and understand the when, what, and how of investing for the future. This framework goes further than my LA example. To understand better trade-off of design stages, technology generations, and who and how different groups of people in the city may be affected. Even a simple change to an automated tolling system or a street redesign has complex trade-offs and consequences cities and states need to manage. Thank you for listening. I look forward to answering your questions and a fruitful discussion.